Today, let's talk about a very useful theorem in geometry, and that's called the inscribed angle theorem, which says, suppose we have a circle, and let's say here is the center of the circle, and let me first form a central angle right here for you guys, and let's say this angle is 80 degrees. Notice how we have formed this arc right here. This is how I like to look at it. The inscribed angle says the following. Let's look at this point and this point. And I'm going to pick another point outside of this arc right here, right? Let's say I pick this point right here. Then I'm going to connect the dots. So notice that both of this angle and this angle, they sustain, meaning they kind of obeyed the same arc right here. In this case, this angle is going to be just half of the central angle, which is just going to be 40 degrees. All right, done. And if you were going to pick another point, let's say somewhere here, it's going to work the same. Connect these two points here, right? This point, this point, and also here. They sustain the same arc. This angle will just be half of the central angle, which is 40 degrees. So in general, if you call this angle Theta, let me erase this a little bit. Just erase this. And I'm just going to call this angle alpha, this angle alpha. Well, theta, it's going to be two times the angle alpha. In another word, the central angle is always going to be twice as big as the angle on the circle formed by uh, this construction. And in fact, Mm, you might notice there's another possibility. What if you happen to pick a point right here and you just kind of connect the points like this, right? Same thing, right? Same thing. So in fact, in order to prove this, we will actually have to break down into cases. So here we go. Case one. Case one, it's the case that if you happen to get diameter like this, right? So point here, point here, and then if you connect, you get a diameter, right? Okay, so this is the first case. How do we prove it? Well, we are on the circle, here it's the center. So we are gonna utilize the radius. Notice this right here will be the radius. Likewise, this right here will also be the radius. So that means these two sides are congruent. So in fact, we have a what? I saw this triangle, right? If you look at this red triangle here. So that means this angle is alpha, so will this angle. And then this angle here, it will just be 180 minus two of the alphas. Now, if you look at the whole thing from here to here, theta and the blue angle, they form a straight line, right? Therefore, we can just say that theta plus 180 degrees minus two alpha equals 180 degrees. Well, they have 180 degrees on both sides. So theta minus two alpha equals zero, meaning theta equals two alpha. Done, then that's case one. Now, as of case two, okay, here's the point, here's another point, right? I'm going to pick another point, let's say, right here. Connect the dots. Like this, all right? Now, for this case, here is our alpha. To prove it, we can actually use case one. And remember, case one is use the diameter, right? And to do so, why don't we start with this point here and then go through the center and get our diameter. Now notice, we have broken down alpha into two smaller angles, also theta into two smaller angles. But these two angles might not be equal. So I'm gonna call this alpha one, alpha two, theta one, theta two. Now, because we have the diameter case, and that's case one, so I can just say by case one, if you just look at theta one and alpha one, we can utilize that, right? 
theta 1 equals 2 times alpha 1. Well, if you look at theta 2 and alpha 2, we can do the same thing. Theta 2 equals 2 alpha 2. Aha! Let's go ahead and add these two equations. On the left-hand side, we have theta 1 plus theta 2. On the right-hand side, we can factor out 2, and then that's alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Theta 1 plus theta 2 is exactly what our original angle theta is. So we can just say theta equals 2 alpha 1 plus alpha 2. It's our original alpha. So once again, we are done. Now for the third case, hmm, which one is the third case? Earlier we said that we don't want to have the diameter, right? That's case 1, so we don't want to do that anymore. And then case 2 is somewhere like here, right? In fact, we have two little possibilities for case 1. The first one is this diameter. The other one is this diameter, right? So for case 2, it was anywhere here, right? It was anywhere here. So for case 3, it's anywhere here or anywhere here, right? I am just going to pick a point right here, okay? So that's case 3, and here we go. This time when we connect it, it looks kind of weird, but it still works. So here, it's our alpha. And for this one, it might be a little bit trickier because how can we utilize case 1 to help us out? Well, if I draw the diameter like this, it's not going to relate with the alpha here, right? So no. And I don't want to draw a diameter here either. So why don't we try to start with this point and then go to the center to form our diameter here. Now this time you can see that, hmm, if you call this angle, let's say theta 1, and if you name this angle alpha 1, well, if you look at the whole thing first, and I'm going to draw that in yellow, theta 1, theta, and if you look at alpha 1, alpha, both angles, they obey this arc, right? So if you kind of look at the yellow right here. So we can use case 1. So by case 1, we can say that theta 1 plus theta, the central angle is 2 times these two small angles together, which is alpha 1 plus alpha. Now, if you look at the blue part, theta 1, right, we get this arc. And if you look at alpha 1, we also get the same arc. So, by case 1 again, we can say theta 1 equals 2 times alpha 1. Now, this is very nice because this time we can subtract these two equations and we will see that theta 1 minus theta 1 is 0. So, the left hand side just gives us theta and of course distribute these two we have 2 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha alpha 1 2 alpha 1 minus 2 alpha 1 is 0 so they are gone so once again theta equals 2 alpha with that we are 